Hi, I'm Therese, and today I'll show you how to create a pinwheel that spins with the power of a motor. In this project, we will introduce some new components and concepts, so make sure that you've read page 95 and 96 in the project book before continuing watching this video. The new components are a DC motor, a MOSFET transistor, and a diode. The shaft of the motor will rotate when energy is applied to it. That's how we will make our pinwheel spin. The motor is an inductive device, which means you need to consider something called back voltage or back EMF when using it in a circuit. Whenever the power to the motor is shut, the motor will generate a voltage spike in the opposite direction. This voltage spike in the wrong direction can damage the rest of the circuit. So we need to take care of this by adding a diode in parallel to the motor as the circuit shows on page 96. Since a diode can only conduct current in one direction, we will place it in the opposite direction of the rest of the circuit. This way it won't interfere with the circuit when the motor is running. The motor only has two leads for ground and power, so we will need a transistor to control it. The transistor is a component that will act like a switch, but instead of closing it by pressing a button, we close it by sending a digital signal to it. Lastly, we will use a 9V battery to power the motor separately since the power from the board is not enough. I will show you how. Make sure they have nothing connected to your board. And I've already started by preparing the breadboard with power and ground lines. I'll start by connecting the switch in the same way as we did in project 1, your first circuit. Make sure to check out that video. And I'll connect this to digital pin 2. So when we press this button here, this digital pin will read high since the legs are connected to 5 volts in ground. As mentioned, the motor needs to be powered externally by a 9 volt battery, so I will connect the battery snap to the power and ground lines here. Whenever we have different power sources, we still need to connect the grounds together. Later we can connect the motor to this power source, but first we'll connect the transistor. The transistor has three legs. If we place it down like this, with the metal tab touching the table, the left pin is called gate, the middle is drain, and the right one is called source. If we provide voltage to the gate, drain and source will be connected to each other. This is how we will turn the motor on and off. I will connect the transistor with the metal place facing my right side. Now each leg is connected to a unique row. Since the top leg is now gate, I will connect it to digital pin 9. The source should be connected to the ground side, so I will connect it immediately to ground. Now we need to connect the motor in series with the transistor, so we will use the drain leg to connect with the motor. Remember that there needs to be a diode in parallel with the motor, so I will make a node on this side of the breadboard. Now we have power here. And this point will lead to ground through the transistor. I will connect the motor in between these two with a diode in parallel. The diode has a stripe on one end. This is the negative end, so the current can only flow in this direction. We want to connect this in the opposite direction of the rest of the circuit, so we connect the negative terminal to the power line of the battery and the positive to ground node here. There, now we can connect the battery and also connect the board to the computer and upload the code. In the code, we tell the transistor to connect the drain and source legs to each other by writing high to the motor pin. This will close the motor circuits and start the motor. We will only do this when the button is pressed. Therefore, we keep this code within an if-else statement containing the button switch state. Now that we have the motor spinning, we just need to assemble the pinwheel. In your kit you will find this piece of colored cardboard, as well as some assembly pieces and a connector to your motor shaft. If you have one, you can also use a CD to make your construction more robust. Follow the instructions on page 100 and 101 to assemble your pinwheel and attach it to your motor shaft. Now it's done! Our own motorized pinwheel. Be careful when you start it because it can spin pretty fast. Next week we will continue to use these